What up, Headspaces? VJ, the brother from the ancient mother. Let me fix my hat up. I've had episodes where I've done this whole thing with my hat the wrong way around. So yeah, um, Headspace album review. Today's album is very special for me to review because I'm a big fan of lyricists and whenever I get the opportunity to review an album from a rapper that is unapologetically about their bars first, um, it's always an opportunity that I relish with each and every second of the experience. So here I bring you, rapper called J. Seth, also from Durban, it's been a while since we've had a Durban MC being reviewed on the headspace. Did we, who's the last person? Did we, did we even? Do we even have? Uh, no, I think I'm sure we, we, we but, must have had one of Durban night or two decades. Hey, Supampo on the club. Is this the, is the, is the Devon debut? Yeah, hey, I think so. Except I'll have to check, you know, yeah, but yeah. Ne? I don't Not think sure. we have it, yeah. Because I scored, I score provincially bound. You see, this is why we forget these things. We yeah. are all South African. But the project is called Bushido. Um, and it's an interesting interpretation of the concept of Bushido. Anyone who's familiar, you know, it, it's around the Japanese samurai warrior code. Um, it's about honor. It's about being able to fight for those who are valuable, but also to understand your own importance in the kingdom, amongst other things. Um, but the interesting thing is there is a, a, a real colorful and rich history of Africans and Asians being excited borrowers of each other's culture. Um, we've had a lot of hip hop, we've had a lot of Afro punk, Afro synth, Afro inspired sonic and aesthetic culture make its way into places like Japan and China and Korea. And likewise, we've historically had uh, blacks in the diaspora and in Africa show a huge inspiration to the martial arts, um, to certain aspects of Chinese aesthetic, Japanese aesthetic, Zen culture, Buddhism. Um, so these cultures have been married in ways that can be, you know, taken on the surface on a pop culture level because we've seen, you know, uh, <coughs> Bruce Lee fight Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in a martial arts match and we've seen a lot of um, references to Dragon Ball Z in, in hip-hop and rap music but we also should really consider when you take from another's culture are you truly honoring them? So for me when I saw the concept and I dived into the album that was the real question for me. Uh, does J. Seth show a deep understanding of what the code entails and does he make it his? Because I think the difference between inspiration and appropriation is to appropriate is to simply take something as it is and duplicate it in your context. But to be inspired is to understand the fundamentals of what makes that work in its form and in its function and to be able to bring it back in ways that are unique to your context and allow for it to regurgitate itself with a level of freshness and vitality even though there might be things that directly reference themselves from something else. So, is Bushido an appropriation or an inspiration? Let's go into it. The project is laced with the obvious references to you know these martial arts movies about the code um, it's bridged together by J. Seth's slow easygoing clear delivery which is pretty much very dialogue-esque uh, this is definitely a project for the earphones or for intimacy J. Seth is not talking to a larger audience it really feels like He's narrating his story for you and for you only. So I love it in that sense is that it's a risky move to kind of format and contextualize a project in that way. And I think 
it might not be intentional i think it just might be the way man delivers his verses he's very calm and he's in no rush and there's a certain level of poise and compactness about the way that he delivers his flows he's not trying to be grand he's a simple man telling a simple story from a simple place and the beauty and simplicity is that it's easily accessible and with the right language which Jay said has because you know he's a pretty good MC he's able to give you exciting narratives into an MC's life into the human struggle into the general thrust of what he feels is the code of honor in his life um, and I feel the sonic production assist in that it's that eerie kind of open um, very blue and purpley texture his world feels like being in the midst of a shadowy passageway while he leads you slowly into this rhythmic story of what it means to be honorable and go through the different challenges in life uh, pretty brief as I said pretty compact it zaps its way in and pulls you out way before you could even really savor it so maybe there's a certain level of kind of the story ending prematurely uh, but I mean he does kind of drag it on so a minute will feel like an hour if you're really listening and this is a project for the listening this is that kind of hip-hop that really deliberately caters to your head and to your head only the rest of your body is kind of suspended in the momentum of listening to this man uh, render his story to you and making it come alive trying to make it come alive and I think the relationship between the beats and the voice works well because there's not a lot happening other than the drums with a little bit of a laid-back sample approach J Seth becomes the predominant force which leads this project so it's pretty well structured and I think overall the lack in this is that yes I do feel in answering that question that it ultimately becomes an appropriation because unlike the Wu-Tang Clan who used uh, a lot of Asian culture be it references to Bushido and the Samurai Code be it references to ninjutsu and the ninjas be it just references to martial arts as a kind of a metaphor for staying sharp as an MC think uh, the Jizza liquid swords I feel like in a way Jay said was creating a reiteration of this where really the Bushido is the sharpness and the focus of the skill of rapping but also just generally in life but I do think that the difference between the Wu-Tang projects and this is that the Wu-Tang also takes what they've been inspired by and they bring you to Staten Island dubbing it Shaolin but making you see how they're mirroring the survival ethics of this ancient Asian these Asian ways of being into the streets they're transplanting you into their world so there's something very uniquely uh, them in this whole delivery of being the Wu-Tang Clan J Seth on the other hand doesn't seem to take the concept and yank it fully into his home ground I still find myself asking where and how does it relate to him being a South African being from Durban um, being quote unquote colored slash black and how that kind of fits into the identity there's a lot of lingering uh, uh, holes that can be poked in choosing any concept as a rapper and I know we're inspired by so many things but if we're going to take from another person's uh, culture we're gonna have to find a way to make it sense to us because other than that then we truly are just kind of stealing uh, in a creative way and I know many would say great artists steal but I think true originality though borrowed finds a way to translate itself in constantly novel ways and I think that's kind of where this album this project stops it takes the concept of honor it borrows the Japanese code it's able to take boom bap instinct um, it's able to wrap itself around that uh, lyrical hip-hop sensibility 
but then the concept is not complete in its journey into its home ground he's a South African and if I was playing this to an American they might just feel like this is somebody from around the way but if I was playing this for a South African perhaps they might feel a little bit lost and this is where the intersection of culture and critique comes in this is where people like me come into the picture because if we're going to be talking about ideas we kind of have to have an understanding of where these ideas come from, how we make them theirs, and what that conversation between what we're inspired by and what it ultimately turns into really is about and how it can become effective. So ultimately, I'm gonna have to give this one a six out of 10 for, like I said, number one, it kind of feels a little bit too quick, too fast. Uh, a lot could have been done to emphasize on the concept and the idea. So it pretty much just becomes another basic rap album which focuses on lyricism and gives us good uh, fundamental skills and so it's nostalgic in that way it's a great refresher to the fact that we have rappers who can rap and rap well but does it add anything exciting to the dynamic i would say no because it failed to make this concept ring home and if your audience who fundamentally are going to start from home are going to understand who you are and what you're trying to do it's going to be important to take your inspiration and make it work in your immediate surrounding. That's my critique. I would like to appreciate J. Seth's skill because, again, I'm a fan of lyricism. I'm a fan of rap for rap's sake. But in this large dynamic where we have our own renditions of trap, our own renditions of crunk, our own renditions of everything that we've heard from the diaspora as we've interacted with hip hop, it's important that we make it ours in some way. Make it yours. My name is VJ, the brother from the Ancient Mother. It's been another album review. Salute.